Welcome back to another Flip Talk podcast. It's your boy Kudos. We have my co-host Alex, and we have our guest for today, Steven. How you doing, man? Alex, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Three five five in the building. You know? <laughs> yes, yes. So, so if you guys aren't aware, this is one of Alex's boys. So you're gonna hear a lot of reminiscing later going uh, going on later. But um, let's just jump straight into it. So, uh, tell me who you are and what you do for a living. And we'll go in from there. All right. My name is Steven Agosto. I'm uh, an executive chef of a casino. Uh, I've been cooking for about 12, 13 years now. Um, and I'm currently in uh, California. Nice. Nice. So, you know, like, I feel like well, a lot of questions people have going straight into it is just kind of like, how do you become a chef and just the lifestyle of a chef? So maybe let's start there. So... How do you even get into it, man? Like, it's crazy. So, I'm going to just uh, let you in on how I got started cooking. Because mm-hmm. I've never, in my right mind, thought I was going to be a chef. Like, that was never on my dream list. That was that was the last thing on my mind. I've never wanted to become a chef. Right. Um, it was while I was in the military. And I was stationed in Louisiana. And while I was in Louisiana... There's no cuchi fritos. There's mm. no chicken spots. There's no Chinese food. There's no pizza shops. So I was homesick. You know, I went from New York City, the Bronx, where everything's open, the life of the party, <laughs> to literally the total opposite. Swamp country in the middle of nowhere. The only Puerto Rican for probably miles and miles and miles. You know, um, I'm talking about total, total culture shock. So, you know, I got, to, you know, when you home and you're eating every day and abuela's making arroz con gandule or, or you know, uh, chuletas every day, you're like, you kind of get tired of eating the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. But when you're away and you have nothing that reminds you of home, you know, you're going to start missing that home-cooked meal that even if it's a, you know, arroz con tuna, un huevo frito on top of steamed rice, you know, you're going to miss those home-cooked meals. So I actually started cooking or falling in love with cooking when I was in the military because I was missing all those dishes, you know, that abuela used to make and my mom used to make. So I would call her up and be like, abuela, you know, hey, I'm starving. How do you make, you know, your arroz con andule? How do you make that, that chuleta? How do you make the pollo guisado? And over the phone, she would tell me all the little recipes, you know, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> try to give me instructions. And she's like a finger of this, a pinch of that. And at that time I didn't know anything. So I'm like, Abuela, you know, your hands are much different than mine. Right. Your, your pinch and my pinch are totally two different things. So me trying to cook those dishes pretty much, uh, it was horrible. Nothing tasted like Abuela's dishes. Mm. And I pretty much, um, the only thing that was available right outside of the base was one Walmart, a strip club, a bar, <laughs> and a barbershop. That's it. Mm. Literally, the, there was no bodegas, there was no supermarket, there was nothing. So I pretty much started building my own little kitchen in in my barracks room in the military. Nice. So I went and got a George Foreman grill, a little rice cooker, you know, uh, a little uh, um, thing to cook vegetables. And I started calling my grandma every week and started cutting up, cooking in my barracks room. And that's how I initially started falling in love with cooking. Nice. So, so since, uh, since you're Spanish, is like, is that yeah. your, is that your specialty? Cause you know, every, every chef has something they go to. So specialty wise, I'm, I'm considering myself a fine dining chef. So I've, mm. uh, I cook Spanish food because that's a comfort to me at home you know there's no puerto rican restaurants out here like that there's no mm-hmm. no dominican spot there's no more fungo spots so if i want something i have to make it but my specialty is fine dining so i've i have gotten the chance to work with some amazing chefs and some amazing ingredients and stuff that growing up in new york city i would never thought i would have tried you know truffle caviar mm-hmm. um lobster sea urchin um the craziest thing you could think of, I got my hands on and I got to try and, and, and experience different cultures working in all these crazy restaurants. So my style, I love fine dining. I love farm to table. 
um, especially us as Latinos and growing up in the Bronx, you know, everything is out of lata. Everything yeah. is, uh, you know, has to have some type of shelf life, right? Absolutely. We're pulling stuff out of the freezer because, you know, we can't make ends meet. So we got to get what we can. We always looking for a deal or stuff. So now that I have access to amazing fresh product, especially out here in California, I love the freshness that I could go out down to Los Angeles and, and talk to the fisherman and he could give me a fish and I could go ahead and have it. An hour ago, he caught it, and an hour later, it's on my table, and I'm cooking it. That's that's amazing. That's that's definitely like crazy. too. well, based off what you were saying, it just kind of like when you when you're in the military, you're like alone. It's not like you're home. You don't have your parents, so it's like you're forced to learn how to cook. Because if now you're eating out every day, no, but eating out or también, you know, like at that time I wasn't married, so mm -hmm. they have uh what is called a defac, uh, um, kind of like a soldier's cafeteria. Okay, and it's like, but it's like school lunch. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, as an adult, you don't want to be eating school lunch. You know, it's like bland ass food, no flavor. You know, <laughs> you're just like, same thing over and over. You know, vegetale without no salt. And I'm like, what is this? They, none of this has any type of flavor. <laughs> so you miss, start missing all those homecoming. You're like, what is a casserole? You know, what's meatloaf? What is all this stuff that I'm not used to eating? <laughs> and these people around me are tearing it up. You know what I mean, they, they're loving it. Definitely. And and uh, one thing I caught on to, you said when, you're, when your abuela was giving you the recipes, it's like, you said like the cooking wasn't good. So like, I feel oh. like to me, it's like, you would think that somebody is a chef, they automatically learn how to cook from the jump. And it's like, there's, there's skills that go into it and like development. So like, where do you go to learn these skills? So obviously I just wanted to let you guys know how I fell in love with food. Mm. And now while I was in the military, Pretty much, I started cooking and I started getting uh, my grandma and my mom to send me sazon, adobo, all the, mm. you know, our, our staples to cook. Because yeah. they didn't have none of that stuff here. They just have like salt and pepper, like the regular garlic salt. So I was like, hey, I need that sazon, I need that adobo, I need this. So as I'm cooking, you know, it being um, the military rooms are kind of like college dorms, right? Okay. The smell started traveling through the, the barracks. So all of a sudden, I'm getting knocks on my door like, yo, is that you cooking? What, what? I've never smelled that before. You know, what is it? But like in a good way, like, because it's a, you know, a grilled chuleta or, or some kind of or something they're making and they never smelled those flavors before. So as I started developing the, all those, uh, um, all the soldiers started falling in love with my cooking, I decided to get out of the military and pursue my career as a chef. So I did go to school. Um, first step was going to school. I got out of the military. Um, I decided to pursue a career as a chef. I, 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 I want to cook. I told myself. And at that time, 12 years ago, was the when, you know, diners, drives, and dives were popular. All those food shows were popping up. You know, uh, Chop was first popped off. Um, what was the other one? Um, Iron Chef. Yeah. All, all those nice. chefs. And, and me on the soldier, I, was, I, I had nothing to do. I'll be watching this in my dorm, like, oh, shit, look at that. Look at that burger with cheese inside and bacon. And and look at this big pork a pork chop that's this big. Or look at this big steak. You know, I started falling in love with it. And um, I decided to pursue my career of, of being a chef, and I, and I started by going to school. Um, this career, after I've been in it for a while, getting close to 15 years, the school, it's good, but you this is the kind of job you need to know hands-on. It's like construction, right. right? You can read a book, but if you don't know how to break drywall, you don't know how to what tool is what, you're not going to be able to do it. You can't, yeah, you can learn off a book, but it's not the same thing as you cutting away or sawing or putting down cement and all this stuff. You have to do it with your hands. No, so it's one of those jobs. So I went to school for two years, uh, right away got a job. And I didn't starting at the bottom. I actually started off at the bottom, bottom of the total pole, which was a dishwasher. That mm -hmm. is the lowest position at the restaurant. And I didn't care. I was like, hey, I don't care. I've done it in the military. I started from the bottom. I'll wash dishes until I'm into that, that chef position with the chef with the hat and everything else. Like I'm shooting for your, your job. And I will go ahead and I'll be working temp jobs, washing dishes as fast as I can and running to the chef, like, hey, can I plate those desserts? Can I get my hands dirty? He's like, all right, change your apron, boom. 
and I'll go ahead and I'll help him plate or he'll let me put a garnish on or or help me cook something. And he like, I get your ass back to, to washing dishes. And I'll go back, wash as fast as I can and get back on the line. Hey, what else can I do? Can I chop these vegetables? Can I do this? Can I practice how to do this? And that's how I got my experience, like grinding and literally from the bottom as a dishwasher. And then from there, you know, uh, uh, I got my first break at a, at a casino um, where they like, hey, I see you're a dishwasher. I see you're, you have military experience. I see you uh, uh, going to school. Uh, we would like to offer you a job, you know, in the casino. And I said, sure. Same thing. Started at the bottom, re restocking the buffet, putting oysters, cleaning up plates, busting dirty dishes. After three months, got promoted to a cook. Finally wow. got my hands dirty. And they were like, hey, you want to, um, you think you're badass? I'm like, yeah, bring it on. They took me to the hardest station, which was the, the Asian station, walking. And I've never worked with a walk or anything, anything in my life. And they just threw me in there on a busy Saturday night and I'm getting my butt kicked, flame all over the place, things jumping, everything's burning. Like, oh shit, you know, <laughs> flying all over the place. But feel like the chinitos, feel like the chinitos, the chinitos when yeah, they be yeah, there like, hey, what you want? Part five rice? Yeah. Like, but Man. I'm serving, you know, 3,000 people a night. And, I, and I'm like, you know, I love the thrill. I love the challenge. Like, I love the excitement. Even in that time when I'm getting my butt kicked, you know, uh, just exciting. Of people coming, I'm like, oh, let's go, let's go. I love that. And I think that's why I did the military too, because of the high intensity, the high volume, and everything else. No, I like the fact that, you know what, Steve, that the fact that you you understood what you wanted, which is the best thing. Like, you already knew, like, you went through the process, right? When, when, um, Jonathan, when I was hanging, when I was hanging out in, in his building, you know, I, we were older, I was older than him. You know, watching him, you know, watching him, you know, grow because, you know, it was him. It was another friend of ours, Javi. You know, they were, you know, he was the one that I would see. He was grinding. He was like, that was his life. Like he was out. He was playing either baseball. He was playing football. He was doing whatever he could. He was grinding. So the fact that that doesn't surprise me at all. The fact that you when you went to the military was kind of a shock because I was like, damn. All right. But that's what he wants to do. That's cool. I'm, you know. And there was all love because, bro, there was, you know how, you know how it was living in 355. You know, it was, it was, it was rough, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was rough. So, you know, the fact that you came out of there with a positive mentality, you know, knowing how your mom was, you know, knowing how that situation turned out. Now it's like, you know, now I see your efforts. I see your grind. And it's so amazing to see you, like just going through your social media, just watching you how, you become this 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 excellent chef. Like you took your craft, you take your craft so seriously, and that's what some people tend to not understand. When you find something you love, bro, and it doesn't it doesn't become a job. It's not a job. This is something that you love. You love to do. You wake up every day, Steve. And I know it's like, you know, it's time to grind. It's get get back out there. Let's make something interesting. Let's make something new. No, the thing is, you hit everything on the nine, the the nail on the head. The number one thing now in the time we're in right now is with so many people are caught up in the social media age, right? Especially people younger than us. Um, they see the internet and the social media and everything else, and they don't know. They think it's overnight success, right? A lot of people look at it and think, oh, they see me now and they think I've been, this is just overnight. They don't know those times that I had to work 16 hours. I literally came home, take a shower, to sleep on the couch for four hours, and then we'll go work another 16 hour shift. A lot of people don't see that. They just see the glamour and everything else. And the the thing about media now is that a lot of people just see the success and they don't see the, all the hard work. And so many people are caught up like, oh, I want that, I want that, but they want it now. And they don't know it takes time. Yes, there are lucky people that they get it done and some people get it done in a shorter period of time. But it takes a lot of work and a lot of grind for you to get there. You know, for me, in the position I'm in now as an executive chef, it takes people 20 plus years to get where I'm at. And I did it in 11. So I'm already ahead of the game. And again, it's still 11 years. You know, that's a that's a child's life. You know, that's an 11-year-old kid if you think about it. But it took 11 years of grinding, 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 working nonstop, no birthdays, no weekends, uh, uh, 
literally like, oh, um, how the fuck I'm gonna put gas in my car? Cause I gotta be right back at work. I don't get paid till Friday. You know, a lot of that to finally, okay, 11 years. Now I can, wow, I did this, but 11 years is in my in my career is pretty damn good for for an executive chef. Like it's pretty much, you know, like I said, people would take 25 years to get to where I'm at. Yeah, no, definitely. It's to me, it's like I said, it's the hunger, it's the drive. You know, especially now that you know, especially now that I know that you're married, you have your, you know, you have your kid. So now that drive is a whole different, you know, it's a whole different drive now. Now you keep on pushing because now you know that there's somebody that's right behind you. And, you know, there's always that, you know, that that initiative to keep pushing forward. How does that grind change now? Now that you are married and you have that kid for you mentally. Well, me mentally, let's say so. um, Obviously, you know how bad 355 was in the Bronx was, right? Even, Even me, you know, going in. You know, a military high school inside of Vander High School. You know, people try to punk you because you got a uniform on. And you don't know how many times people had to defend yourself and scrap just because they think they tested you just because you have a uniform on. You know, like, oh, look at this military wannabe. And then all of a sudden you had to throw hands and everything just because people are going to try to test you. Um, so all the stuff that we went through, you know, lights, you know, the lights getting cut off. You know, how many times did the pipes freeze? And we we heating up a pot of water to take a hot shower because there's not enough hot shower in the building. Uh, you know how many times that we like I had to stand with my grandmother at, on Saturdays at church to get that free bag of compra because they would be giving out the compra right there in the corner. And I you know me embarrassed like oh but I, you know I'm doing it to help my grandma and all this and I'm like all that I told myself I don't ever ever want my daughter or my family to ever go through what I went through. Ever, 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 ever. You know, uh, me, my mom, my, you know, my mom's doing great now, but, you know, we were in a studio apartment, literally in a studio apartment, four of us, me, my sister, my stepfather at the time, and my mom. They sleeping on, on the on a mattress on the floor, and we, me and my sister are sharing a room. So now where my daughter has her own room, we got a master bedroom. Pretty much this way, my master bedroom is bigger than the apartment that I lived in my whole life, you know? So to me, it's like, I told myself, I've never want to turn back and let my family or bring a life into this world to, to, you know, live the life that I live with all those little things. And, you know, my grandma giving me her last little $2 out of her, her caltera because I didn't want to eat the rice and beans. She's like, here, go buy yourself some chicken wings or a pizza. Like never, never. I told myself, you would never, my kids would never go through that. But I wish, I wish it was back into those times. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Nothing well, now, but before. that's expensive. <laughs> 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 you know, Listen, those two dollar chicken wings, those two dollar chicken wings at the spot, bro. I don't care what nobody says. Oh, the two oh, the fifty hero sandwich at the mm-hmm. bodega with nah, with, three, with three dollars, you could have got a, a a sandwich and a and a drink and a soda, and you you five, good for five, five dollars was a whole course meal. Five dollars no. was a whole entire meal, bro. Five dollars was the uh, a big soda, a uh, Arizona can, a hero mm-hmm. sandwich, chips, and a yeah. cupcake, with little uh, Swedish fish or whatever candy you wanted. Yeah, <laughs> you, literally had, you literally had a four course meal with that with that five dollars at the bodega. Listen, I right, I grew bro. I grew up on the chopped cheese, so <laughs> yeah, that's after chopped cheese mm-hmm. became a craze after I left. That's way, but that yeah. was the. The, the ham and cheese with the old cheese. school plancha, you know, <laughs> 50 cent coffees, like, bacon, hey, egg, and cheese. Cheese, like, bacon yeah. egg and cheese, bacon and cheese on a bagel. That's, and mind that's you, that was right, like, that was really before, like, like even now, like, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot, a lot of the Puerto Rican and Dominican store owners, you know, we they still had like Pancho Wow, like, you got that, like, there, especially around there, you got that privilege where you wanted like a hot sandwich, you went and you got in that Pancho Wow or that Pan de Agua. You know, that shit was delicious. No, you really hardly don't get that now. You have to really go find it, search it for it in New York. Certain places that you, if you know the spot to go to, you can pretty much get it. Or certain no, but bakeries. The, are- but the thing is, that's the thing. We had so many local bakeries. There was one right across right yeah. Grand Conquerors. There was like, you're going, my grandma would send me early in the morning, vete to Grand Conquerors and grab up a pan solao. Uh, um, 
get two, and then she'll be making the cafe, and you know we'll do a little egg sandwich or whatever on the pan, and and you got yourself a, a good breakfast, the coffee. But now you can't. Those were the simplest times, the good times, yeah. yeah those were the good times, bro. So now, Steve, um, from what I from what I see from your social media, um, yeah. I know your your daughter is on the spectrum. Yeah. My son is my son is also on the spectrum as well. Okay. Um, and I know that you know being you know, me being my dad, being an autism dad is, um, it, like I said, it, it has its ups and its downs because as much as, you know, and for me, it's like I said, with me and my son, we kind of have, you know, me trying to learn him and, you know, me trying to be able to adjust to him as much as possible. Mm-hmm. When did you find out about your daughter's, um, autism, autism and what, yeah. And then how did you and your wife, like, you know, be able to attack, you know, get to the bottom of it and be able to help your daughter and be able to, like, you know, adjust to her as much as possible. So I kind of saw, I kind of saw the signs early. Um, my, uh, um, I already had prior experience because of my nephew. My sister had, had my nephew and he was autistic at a young age. And from all the signs that I saw from my nephew, I saw my daughter uh, with the same thing. She wouldn't, she was speaking and, you know, she was at, we, she got diagnosed early cause I was like really pushing and I got her the help she needed when she was like two, two and a half, but she was already lining up her toys. You know, she would have to have, if I was giving her a snack, you know, she'll have her plate. She'll have to separate everything by color or separate everything. She didn't want anything touching, uh, um, you know, before that, if something was kind of like off, she'll be like, she'll have to go back and make sure and then make sure it was like, right, like kind of like OCD, like, no, I want this toy to face this way, you know, and all the toys will be lined up in front of the TV like that, you know, so all those little signs and my wife actually was a little bit more um, in denial. She was just like, no, you know, she just, she's only two, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, there's little signs, you know, so. I was like, no, I had, I had, I had good insurance. I was like, you know what? We're, I'm, uh, my insurance was kind of taking long. The doctor that I had at the time, and they're like, same thing. She's only a girl, so I took her to San Diego to a specialist. And he out of pocket, and I didn't. It was a little hefty, but I was like, no, I'm a. If they tell me she's good, I don't care. At least I know she's good. But at least let me make sure, because to me, the signs are like right in my face. So yeah, no. Mm-hmm. First, first thing the doctor did. She's seen the in the in the room. She takes a uh you know those popsicle sticks, the one they used to put in your mouth when when you go to the doctor, like mm-hmm. ah stick out your tongue. She takes a whole can of that and throws it on the floor next to her. And we all jump because we wasn't expecting that. She literally just threw it on the floor. We all jump and she's like this, la 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 in our own little world. And that was the first time. That's the thing, the first time my wife noticed like Oh shit! You know she's in her own little, her own little world. You know she's she don't see anything else. You know it's, and we started getting her, her the help. And like I said, I got her early, early, early on. Um, and she was obviously delayed with uh, uh, being potty trained and everything else. But during COVID, the casino closed down for, for two months, and we got her to eat. All the f- uh, food. My daughter now, as a seven-year-old autistic kid, she uh, she reads. She's uh, in a regular classroom. She's not in a special ed because she's up to level. She's top five percent in her class right now. Um, she loves art. She's a uh, um, she. We take her to restaurants. She eats octopus. She eats raw steak. She eat she eats caviar. Um, she helps me cook. Um, you know she. You name it. She. She does it, you know, she, she's well-spoken, well-behaved, and it's because I got her diagnosed so early and we got her help. Um, she actually goes to um, CARDS. CARDS is an acronym for Center of Autism and Related Disorders out here in California. And it's an autism program that right after school, she goes there for another five hours. So she's putting in 12-hour days, 10-hour days, just as we are, Right after school from 7.30 to 2, then 2.30 to 6.30, she's over there, you know, practicing her hand skills, practicing writing, practicing 
uh, how to be around people and everything else. And she's just like a big social butterfly. I have a question for both of you guys. Um, how how do you guys adapt as parents to to a situation like that? Obviously, it's not expected, and you know everybody has different different styles of parenting, right? So. You know, some parents like to be strict. Some parents like to, you know, be a little free with their kids and let them kind of like figure things out on their own. Let you know, kind of let let them fall and get back up, right? So, like, how do you adapt? How 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 do you communicate with your partner to see how you guys are gonna move forward? Because you have to truly be on the same page. And it's like, for example, for like you, Stephen, like you're, you're working a lot. So, like, how do you make time off of your schedule for your child? You know maybe feeling that they need a little more extra attention or maybe they don't. So kind of go into that and you as well, Alex. So like me, I have no family out here. Like my whole family is back on the East Coast, you know. Mm -hmm. It's only, I'm literally the only person out here. It's only my wife and myself. And um, for her, it's a balancing act. Uh, me and my wife both have opposite schedules. Um, we She works mornings, I work nights and we obviously playing hot potato. We're pretty much like it's, and it takes a lot of patience, a lot, a lot of patience and a lot of vacations because since we're playing the hot potato game in the sense of, you know, she works in the morning. Okay. Now she's in school. So it's a little easier. I pick her up. I drop her off. She's picking her up, give, giving her a shower and feeding her dinner. I come home at night. She's sleeping. I give her a kiss good night, you know, like vice versa we're always playing hot potato it's good communication and then on my days off it's total total dedication to to my daughter and then it obviously is like you know um she, autism kid the spectrum is really really big every kid is unique and every kid is special everybody's different my my daughter's gonna be different from from alex kid you know different from my nephews different from my nieces my daughter she likes a uh, routine so we wake up in the morning, we hit the gym together. She goes to the kid daycare. Everybody knows her. She says hi to everybody, blah, 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 blah. She knows right when we get home. Okay, what are we going to eat that? She already knows it's breakfast time. Okay, what do you want to eat? You want to eat pancakes? You want to eat this? You want to make something? Okay, let's eat breakfast. Boom. Okay, now it's shower time. It's, you know, so we have a routine. And for her, it's all about routine. And that's how we, we do it. So for me, um, definitely for anybody out there, you know, when, when Max got diagnosed at a year and a half, um, and then um, that was kind of, uh, we, we noticed it when we were living in Jersey, when um, he basically got more, as we came back to New York is when he got more help and more people came along and said, hey, he, he is on the spectrum. And shout out to his mom, because his mom is probably the biggest advocate and she was the biggest fighter for my son. You know, there was a time where, you know, I wasn't in the picture and I wasn't, you know, and I wasn't around. Uh, but she continued to fight and she continued to push for him. I'm talking about from every single service you could possibly name, fighting the DOE, you know, fighting a bunch of, you know, being able to have the services that he needed to be able to, to move, you know, to be able to grow. And... You know, now, you know, from a from you know from a four year old that only had five words, to now, Jonathan, as you see him now, you know, can you know doesn't stop talking, doesn't want to stop talking, doesn't want to, you know, he always wants, he always has something to say. He speaks his mind. He says it how it is. You know, it's 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 an amazing feat, and definitely is a big shout out deserved to his mom. You know, because she was the one that really did, you know, she fought for a lot of that stuff. And then when I came back into the picture, um, it was more learning about Max, getting used to Max, getting understanding Max's, you know, uh, his little things that he does and, and, and how he reacts to certain things, you know, realizing he's sensitive and, and, and all those other things. So definitely, yes, communication is definitely a big thing because you want to be able to, you know, try to balance that out because you know you you, you want to protect them as much as possible at the same time you really can't you know you try to explain to him things as much as you he could possibly understand because he does understand and he does see it he may not comprehend it in the same way that i do but if you break it down for him in a certain way he does understand and um and any other parents that are dealing with anything like that i said i said 100 
please don't feel like you're 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 pushed against a wall. Please go and do your due diligence. Do not leave your child thinking that oh he's fine. Don't listen to other people. Oh they're okay. Just for your own, just for the child's benefit. Do what you got to do. Make sure he gets some type of diagnosis. And even if he's fine, it's cool. You can live with that. Be like, ah, you know what? It's cool. It is where it is. He's grown. But if it is some type of diagnosis, at least now you have the first step. And being able to move forward and getting them the help. Because as for his mom, as for myself, and as I know for you, Steve, there is kids that do not get the help. And they don't get the attention that they they need and they deserve. And that kind of sucks. You know what I'm saying? That That's kind of... I see it a lot here. I see it a lot here. I see it a lot in other schools. And, and it's rough. You know, and it's rough to see it that, you know, yes, all autistic kids are different. Not all of them Not all of them are like my son. and But they all deserve the same love. They all deserve the same amount of attention. They all deserve the same amount of, you know, help. So... Any parents out there that watch this, please understand that. Please, if you got to do what you got to do, do it. Because don't fail your child. Don't let them fall. Don't let them fall through the cracks. Because as 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 all you think, oh, this is a horrible thing. No, it can't get better. It can get better with understanding, with patience, with love, with kindness. You know, a lot of this stuff. And, you know, it does. Like I said, just being like I said, Steve already had experience in pride. So he caught the warning signs quick. A lot of people don't don't see those things. They won't notice those things if they don't know. So if you feel like there's something going on, if you feel like there's this, you know, please guys, <laughs> find the help that you need and, and, and do what you have to do to be able to help your child out. You know, the one thing is uh, even uh, um, a lot of people that I run into, because I, I like to... I wear it proudly. My work badge, everything has puzzle pieces. You know, I got it tatted on me. You know, I got puzzle pieces on me. Um, number one thing, a lot of people are embarrassed. You know, and don't be an embarrassment. You know, and like you said, the only person you're hurting, you're not hurting yourself. You're hurting the child. Uh, um, the more you hold off, the more you're gonna hold the, the hold back. Uh, I know a lot of parents now, and they they say I had to like pretty much snap them into it. Their kid is. 11 years old, excuse me, nine years old, two, you know, older than my daughter. And they, they don't even speak properly. They're not in the same grade level. And I, you waited this long to, to see the signs where you dad better than I, but so many people are prideful, like, Oh, what did I do? You know, uh, did I do something wrong that they think is, you know, their fault or something, but it, Hey, things happen. You just got to keep moving forward and take it on. And like I said, if you if you can read the signs early and get the child help, you know I could attest my daughter's doing great and she's on the great path. You know I want the best for my daughter. I want her to be independent. Um, obviously, not every case is different, but I want my daughter to be independent and be able to think for herself and and have a life out of you know her her issues. And we seen it. We're seeing it more often now. There's kids who are uh, in college basketball who are autistic. There's you know. Uh, Down syndrome, first Victoria's Secret model. You know, that's that's a a lot of special needs going out to the world and, and achieving more than people who are normal sitting in their asses in the couches right now. I feel like people tend to forget these kids can be very functional, like you guys said, with the proper with the proper training or just life skills in, in general. So I, I think you guys are doing a great job, you know, just acknowledging it because, you know, that, I feel like that's the first problem to begin with. Just the, the longer you put it off, the the long, the more problems you're creating. And it's not for yourself, but it's for your child. So just the acknowledgement and stepping up as a parent, just like, you know what, if this is the case, then how am I going to move forward? Because at the end of the day, this kid, like you guys are saying, can be very functional and have a career and a job and live a healthy life like any other person. It's just that they have to do it in different ways and it's okay to have challenges in life everybody has them regardless if you have these conditions or not so how does that make them or how does, should that shame anybody that has a condition like that but even about getting help right just to finish off what you were saying you don't even have to go down the street with the power of technology now if you feel self-conscious you don't want somebody well you could call somebody uh across the united states across the world look we're i'm in cali 
and we're talking over video camera like we're in front of each other. We have so many resources now that we could, you could get the help even through a computer. You can see a doctor, you can see a psychiatrist, you can get everything over the phone or, or the computer that you don't need to be in person if you're ashamed to go somewhere. You know, there's definitely a lot of help out there. So, uh, you know, you, you have you have a lot on your plate, you know, between work, your family. And so what do you do for yourself? Like, do you have a, a hobby you do on the side? So, so me, I my I'm really big into mental health. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really uh, um, mental and physical help. Uh, you know, obviously growing up in New York, military, you know, uh, being away from family, uh, you need an outlet to plug away these feelings and then us growing up, you know, you had to be tough. You can't, there was no showing emotion. There's no guys talking about your feelings. There was none of that, right? Um, if you were soft, get caught talking about your feelings, you'll get beat up. You know, it's, it's just one of those situations. Um, so, and even mental health, you know, just think about it. Even me, I know I could attest to that. If my boys say I'm depressed, I'm like, you didn't put, shut up, stop being, here, take a shot or stop being a, <laughs> a pump or here, smoke or do something, you know, but now we we have to be actually be especially in the, in the in the minority group we need to be able to speak about things like this because i think we're so prideful you don't need the help you don't need this that's the our our parents culture we need to be able to speak about ourselves so to me it's the gym my outlet is the gym uh i i go in there i uh, did a completely 360 change I, I i gave up drinking um to me i was if you've seen i've, I've always been hustling trying to get to the top and alcohol to me was the only thing bringing me down and not in a bad way, but it was the only thing kind of like, you know, hungover, partying too much and drinking. So I completely gave away that. And I, I focused myself on the gym, you know, and I, I like to, I have a, a an addictive personality, right? Mm. I love to work. I, I, I hit the gym. I'm with my family. Uh, I, if I've got free time, I feel like I'm, I'm wasting time. So I'm, I'm continuously trying to find new products. I literally just, Picked up another hobby. I spend money on a camera because nice. I'm just like, you know what? Hey, you know, I see things differently from mm. from other people. You know, me, 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 you, uh, and Alex could be looking at this bottle, and we all could see three different things. You know, just a bottle. Mm. But I'm saying mm -hmm. we can all three of us can look at the same bottle, and look at uh, at it totally different. So to me, I want to showcase uh, uh, what I see through my eyes through a picture. So now I picked up another hobby. So Jim, I got my own business. Uh, nice. you know, I'm cooking, I'm doing, I'm, I'm literally, I got my hands in like 15 different projects. Uh, I try to stay busy. That's yeah, it's, it's great. It's great. Uh, like me and Alex, I could just tell we're just sitting here and kind of like, we're, we're kind of like grateful to hear the things you're saying, because I feel like you're a great product of your environment. And, um, I, I feel like in a way you're an entrepreneur, but, you're that way because of where you grew up. So it's like you like you said earlier, you don't you don't want your kids to go through what you went through. So it's like that constant grind is embedded into you. So it's like it's, I don't even think you could turn that off if you truly wanted to. I, I truly can't see you being somebody that just like sits at home and does nothing for like a week. Like I feel like you'll get bored. I, I can't. I, I, I mean, vacation for me, unless I'm going somewhere out of the country or like oh, visiting course. family, I I, I can't, I can't, like, I try to take a couple days mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we're like, okay, what else can we do? Project this, 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 you know, and I'm continuously just trying to do it and work. And, and like I said, that number one thing I learned and I want to pass on is, um, time management, right? Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people waste time. Um, and this is what the military taught me, right? I have my day set out and scheduled. From the time I wake up to the time I brush my teeth, I know what time I'm going to take a shower. I have my, uh, I get home at midnight. I have my clothes laid out for, for to sleep in. I got my clothes laid out to go to the gym. I got my clothes that, uh, laid out to go to work the next day down to the socks. You know, I got my work shoes, my socks, my pants, my underwear, my belt, everything laid out to make myself more efficient. So when people always saying they don't have time, I call BS, you know, because there's always time. It's just making yourself more proficient. So me, I, like you said, I'm always busy, right? I wake up, my wife takes my daughter to school. I, uh, uh, I go to the gym, I feed the dogs, I pick her up, driving uh, 45 minutes the opposite way from work to take her to her wow. second school. 
come back, work a, a 10 to 12 hour shift, get home, work on my, my side business, which is, you know, I, I invested in a t-shirt machine and brewery. I'm doing, uh, food products. I'm doing clothing. I'm doing photography. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of everything. So, you know, I, I try to, I set time away, uh, aside for that when I get home. And then I go, I, I take a shower, get all my stuff ready for the next day, and I do it all over again. And that's how I get ahead. You know, so I, I feel like a, a lot of people's problem is I never have time. I never have time. But, you know, most of the time we're we're sitting on the couch on our phones for two hours scrolling away. That, that happens to me, TikTok. Uh, I, I could get stuck on TikTok <laughs> for two hours. And when you look up, it's like, oh, it's 1.30 in the morning. What am I doing? No, I'm guilty of that, and I and I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I manage my time. I'm super one thousand percent guilty of that, because I know I could be doing a lot with my time and a lot better and, and efficient. And I and I and I agree with you one hundred percent, man. I mean, it's it's a lot of things that I could be doing that I should be doing, but I'm not doing. And you know, and I and I'm not sitting here, you know, saying you know agreeing with you because I want to agree with you is because it's the fucking truth because. <laughs> Cause I be, you know, I want to just get out of work and I just want to come home and sit down. You know, I want to just come home and just watch whatever I want to watch. And in reality that, that, you know, that time I could be doing something else more of a positive effect than anything. You know what I'm saying? So I, I definitely agree with you. You know, I, I think your attitude is super infectious, bro. Like I'm saying like, it's like, if I was standing next to you, bro, I want to go do like 30 pushes right now, to be honest with you, my nigga, like, <laughs> Like as thin as thin as you are, my nigga. Like I'm serious. I'm looking at yeah. myself. I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm like damn, bro. Like, I'm, I'm about to start throwing all the shit out the window. Like, <laughs> I don't need the shit. Hey, but, <laughs> no, but let me tell you, look, look, but it's it's hard, dude. Look, it takes time. I was th- I was three hundred and and sixty pounds, uh, uh, a year and a half ago. I was a big boy. Like I was, but you know, like I said, the drinking, the the chef life. Uh, you know, long hours, long weekends, everything else. You know life happens you know you start letting yourself go but it's also how you bounce back and i tell people it's never uh it's never too late if you look some of uh, some of these entrepreneurs some of the biggest company in the world right now uh apple microsoft all, a lot of these people didn't that didn't take off for them until they were 40. you know so uh, to me age is only a number i i i think i'm in my pri- I'm, I'm, I'm on my prime like i'm not slowing down i feel better than i was when i was 21. like i'm Feeling better. I'm down a hundred pounds. You know, um, I'm in the best shape of my life, better than than when I was in the military. You know, uh, um, I got more ambition. I I taught myself financial literacy. You know, because I was a lot of another big problem that we have is we rather look good, and the bank account is sitting on on zero, right? So we we have to stop uh, being prideful and and worrying about what other people think. We have to about our future. So it just trying to get ahead ahead of, uh, ahead of the game and, and think about, you know, everything I'm doing now pretty much, I may not be able to enjoy it as much, but I'm setting up my bloodline, right? I know my daughter and my grandkids are gonna be set. If I have to work until I'm 95 years old, but I know that my bloodline, the Augusto bloodline, 40 years from now, 50 years from now, when I'm past, long gone, they're gonna be straight. So that's what I'm doing it for. I'm trying to change the narrative. A lot of the, a lot of the times, we get caught up on like, oh, this is how it grew up. Is nothing ever is gonna change? No, we need to be the change. We need to change it. And again, I'm not judging. You know, he, yeah. to each his own. You know, I'm not here to talk bad about nobody. But um, mm-hmm. when people tell me there's, an, when somebody give me an excuse, I'm going to give you a solution. No, you know, that money you're spending on the hookah and the drinks and all this. Add that up real quick. And when you start, a lot of people don't see it until you start seeing it on paper. You're like, shit, I just spent how many racks in one month? I spent all these racks, but I'm, I owe 2000 for the car, but I spent seven racks on partying and drinking and, and the brand new Gucci boots and this and that. And I have nothing to show for it. And I live with, I'm living with mommy and this and that, you know, so there's always in a, a, a way of bettering yourself. Always, always. And just to add to that a little bit, sometimes it's not even just trying to keep an image. Sometimes it's the people around you. Um, I, I feel like it's okay to step away from that from that little group, from that circle, to to make a better life for yourself. Because it's not about you letting go of these friends. It's not about you like 
completely cutting them out of your life. It's about you making a, a putting like a border in between where it's like, all right, I, I'll hang out with you guys. I'll go play ball with you guys, but I can't be going out every night with you. You know, like little things like that, especially when you have family and stuff like that. Like you have to, you have to step up and, and start making better decisions because at the end of the day, we're all trying to, the only competition we have is ourselves. We're trying to make ourselves better than we were the day before. And that's what it's about. It's just about taking one day at a time and just like, how can I be better today than I was yesterday? And, th- and that's the biggest thing. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I kind of changed my life around. You know, I, I th- when I when I left New York, I had this image like, hey, you know, you're up to the day I die. I ain't gonna let nobody, like, yeah. I don't care. You know, like, you know, you look at me the sideways, I'm gonna, pump, I'm gonna punch <laughs> in the mouth. All that, <laughs> I'm like, why? You know, I, and so just a couple of years ago, I used to drive around with a bat in my, in my back seat. Hey, this guy honk on me, I'm gonna get out in the red light. What's up, you know? And all that stuff, it's just like, why? Like. And, and I, I learned to like, um, and like I said, all this stuff to a lot of people may sound corny, but it's just about bettering yourself. If you surround yourself around positive people and self-rounded people, I try to uh, surround myself around people who are better than me. And that pushes me. If you're the best person in the room, you need to change your group. You need to surround yourself around better people. Uh, I've been, I may not be the smartest person in the rooms, but I'm going to learn from every single person. And I'm continuously uh, keeping an open mind, even with some of my cooks, right? I have about total about 200 employees, right? Wow. Doesn't mean just because they're below me, doesn't mean I can't learn something from them, right? It may be a little Mexican lady who's making avocados in the back. And she, I'm like, how did you do 80 pounds of avocado in 20 minutes? And she's like, look, I did it this way. And she shows me a trick I've never seen before. So it's always to keeping an open mind and learning as much as you can. I'm I'm con- continuously being a sponge. I'm like, how do you do that? How do you do that? And open. And I don't care if you're below me, above me, if you're the, the guy throwing away the trash, or you're the CEO of the company. I'm going to shake everybody's hand. I'm going to treat everybody respectfully. And I'm, I'm going to get to know everybody and learn from every single body. And if you keep that mentality, people are going to love you. You're going to build a great team around you. And people are always going to be willing to help. I ask you, being that you're a leader of 200 people, you know, and and I know it's hard to deal with 200 different personalities because it, it is, that's a tough, you know, that's a tough envelope to push. So being that you're able to do this, is this pretty much accredited to military, to the sports that you play? Because to handle that, you know, to handle that emotion, like I said, those 200 different emotions. Do you, you know, that that has to be accredited to, you know, the stuff that you, like I said, the sports that you played in the military, you played, and yeah. you was in. Yeah, well, obviously, you know, since little, uh, I was in base. Mm-hmm. I did baseball. Uh, I, I was like, probably four years old. You know, mm-hmm. what is the the minority? What's our parents' dream? A pelotero. You know, they want everybody wants to be a, a baseball player or or an artista or something. You know, so everybody always wants you to be a baseball player. Um, cause it's like the pride and joy, you know, yeah, my, my son, oh, me, he has a pelotera, whatever, but baseball, you could be the best person in the team, right? But if the rest of the people around you are no good, you know, you're like how they say you're the, you're as, as strong as the weakest link, right? So a lot of this, you need to learn how to adapt and deal with different personalities. Everybody has their role, right? And it's learning how to deal with everybody's roles and personalities. You know, like baseball, you know, if you do a baseball lineup, you're going to put one batter that you know he can't hit home runs, but he's going to get on base, right? You're going to have two of those players, and then the third person, you're going to hit that, you're going to put that guy that you know they can hit it out of the park. They'd always hit it out of the park because you need to learn your team and use them to their strength, right? It's the same thing in life. You need, you need to know what ticks makes everybody ticks and what everybody uh, makes work, and then you build it around you. So just like in baseball, you know what everybody's skill is, and you use it to your to your advantage and for the team. You could you could even correlate that to your job now because it's like it's a lot of pressure. Like you said, like the weakest link. You, you need to make sure everybody is just doing the thing because what happens is you make your money based off other people that are coming in, random people that are coming in to taste your food. 
you know, you could have one off day. Somebody could come in and it's like, yo, I tried this fish he made or I tried this steak he made. It was horrible. They're not coming back. So it's like you have that pressure of having that accuracy day to day. So, like, how do you deal with that pressure? You have to definitely have tough skin and mm-hmm. and learn how to just move on, right? Mm-hmm. We're not perfect. We're human. We're not a, a, a machine, right? And even then, machines still mess up, right? Your computer still freezes. Your phone still freezes, right? And they're meant to be perfect, right? And we're human. So there are those days that you're having those tough times, but it's it's all about resilience. Getting through that time when you are you think you're drowning and they, you feel like there's no way out. Just looking at that light at the end of the tunnel. And trust me, there's been times, holiday weekend, those tickets don't stop coming in. And I'm literally just seeing ticket after ticket. And the tickets are hitting the floor. I can literally roll, uh, you know, a, a, a mile worth of, of uh, food tickets all around my hand. And those tickets don't stop coming in. And we're just like, where's this? And you can definitely lose your mind. You know, you're just like feeling lost. People coming back, how long on this plate? How long on this food? Guests complaining, you know, and you like your world is crumbling around you. But if you stay strong and then you look to the person next to you and to, to the left of you and the right of you, and you say, nah, let's go ahead. And it yeah. always takes a leader to, to be like, okay, everybody focus, let's regroup and let's start pushing. And then you start seeing yourself climbing out of that hole. And then what you see, you look around and you start seeing people's confidence coming back that's when everything falls into place. And it's just like a, a sports, right? As a basketball, baseball, no matter what, you're behind 20 points, you're you're down a couple of rounds. But once that leader steps up and, and you see the rest of the team getting their confidence back, forget about it. You can't you can't stop the team. They're gonna come back from a 40, 40 point lead. You know, they're gonna come back from six down round uh down six runs down in, in the last inning, you know, so it doesn't matter as long as you have that confidence and, and it definitely takes a, a strong leader. For sure. Uh, yeah, the, definitely. Um, I was going to ask, um, to, I want you to share like uh, a cool story you have just, you know, you have so many, so many years in the industry. Um, is there anybody like you serve that is a big name? Uh, is there, is there any, like just any story in general you want to share? I, I mean, I've done a little bit of everything, uh, um, working at a casino, um, we take care of a lot of uh, celebrities, right? VIPs, a lot of senators, a lot of politicians, a lot of future uh, ex-presidents too, you know, um, that they come in and they want to be low key, you know, casinos is in the entertainment world, right? Of course. We have people that like to come underground. Nobody knows is there besides the, a few people. And we, we cater to those, to those guests because they like their privacy. Maybe they're not with the, the misses this time. Maybe they're having a special meeting. Maybe they're this. It's none of our problems. Our our job is to make sure they have a great experience and we cater to them. We also then have a uh, a lot of celebrities from Marlon Wayne, and Sync, 98 Degrees, Snoop Dogg, Martha Stewart. Wow. I've done stuff with the Kardashians. I've served. Um, you name it. I've uh, Dodger players. You know, because we're we're only an hour away from LA, so. We have Dodgers. Everybody goes from LA to Palm Springs, and I'm in the middle. So we have a lot of Dodgers that on their off season or their off week, they want to come and and get away from the city. So I've served, you name it, I've served uh, boxers. Uh, I've served the Lakers. I've served Kobe before he passed a couple years. Um, at the other casino I was in, we used to uh, we had a partnership with the Lakers team, and we'll throw a, a Laker party every year. And, you know, I got to shake hands with Kobe and, and all these amazing Laker players. And, you know, I, I got to experience, you know, serving to him sushi by hand and think, oh, thank you, Mr. Brian. And him walking down the hallway, I'm like, Black Mamba. And, you know, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, all oh, that's a great experience that I got to things that I'm, I'm grateful for to be in this industry. And even just making dishes uh, for guests that takes them back to, uh, their memories, right? Um, I've served guests an octopus dish and they literally call me out to the table and I'm like, is there a problem? Is there a complaint? And they're like, no. And they're like literally in tears. And I'm like, wow. are you okay? Do you need me to call? And they're like, no, you know, this took us back to our wedding day, you know, where we had octopus in Greece. 
And this just took us back and we're reminiscing and thank you just to bring back this memory of when we got married in Greece and, and you know, you you made this evening so special and they're like giving me a hug and, 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 and kissing me on the cheek. I hope you think, and I'm like, what, off our plate? So, you know, just cooking food, uh, it's a way to people's hearts. And I, I think I'm really, really grateful for that. I was going to say that. Like, I think that, you know, I think food is always a, you know, food is always, like, important. You know, especially, like I said, in my house, food was important. In anybody's household, food is important because that's the time that you get to spend with your family and, you know, talk about your day and everything else. But I think with your ex with you is that you, you do what you do with love, and I think everybody feels that. It's the energy that you put in your food. It's the energy that you give your guys. So I think that's what makes your food that much more special. I mean, to me, hearing it, you know what I'm saying? That's what makes your food so much, so special because the fact that you're just putting your 100% effort into every single plate is what gives off that energy. And that's a dope energy to give off because you see what you're doing. It's a positive thing. People are, you know, in, in love with your plates that they, they just, it's like you, the blast of flavor just brings them back to 20 years, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. You know what I'm saying? It's just, that's, that's dope. To me, that's, that's like I said, when you put your love into everything is, you know, everything comes out the way you want to. But the thing is the way I do it. And I, I mean, I can't, I speak for myself. I don't speak for the chefs. Mm -hmm. I, uh, one thing that I do is whenever you come into my restaurant, regardless of what restaurant I'm in at the time, I'm going to make you feel, and it, it could be a pizza joint. It could be a, the fine dining restaurant where everything is white tablecloth and fork and you have to come in with a soup. I'm going to make you feel like if you're coming into my home, having a plate on my table and I'm personally taking care of you. Like if you're, you're part of the family. And like I said, the number one thing that I get joy out of is when people say, this don't even feel like a bougie dinner with, I, they feel, I feel like I'm having a dinner with one of my friends and they're, they're drinking, they're having a good time and they're dropping money because they're having, they, they feel so great and they leave out of there. And I have clients, they come back, they're from out of state, they're out of the country. I have people that come from India and Canada and all over the place and they come back once a year and they make sure every year. They call ahead of time. Hey, chef, I'm going to be in, the, in your area. It's that time of the year again. I'm going to come see blah, blah, blah. Okay, how many how many people this time? Blah, blah, blah. And they always make sure to to make it a stop. And that's that's the, the best feeling in the world for me. It's like it's like building family. They, they become family members. It's not even clients or guests. They become family members. This is definitely, I, I feel like very, people are very observant, especially when they go into a restaurant. I feel like the moment you walk in, you're looking at the, the details, just if the place looks clean, if it's packed, how, how's the music. Um, I have a personal story. I remember I went to like this diner with my girl and, and the diner had five stars and everything. And it's like, we get there, the lady serving us, she has like a cast on and then like her hands are all cut up and it's like, you know, her nails are like pitch black and it's like, she's holding our water like from the top of the cup instead of like the side so it's like that vibe just threw it off the whole thing i didn't care had five stars me and my girl just looked at each other like yo we gotta get out of here asap and it's like the experience like we didn't even get to try the food we, like we we just didn't want it so presentation is everything is sometimes it's before you even get the plate it's like you said it's, it's about making some, somebody feel like they're at home so um that experience is something i definitely look at when i go to restaurants and I feel like with that mentality is gonna take you a long way. Um, do you ever see yourself opening a restaurant of your own? Um, I, perfect scenario, perfect world. I would love to open up a restaurant. And to me, I've for a while I chased uh, Mission and Star. Like I was chasing the James B Award and, and Mission and Star. Like I wanted that top of the end fine dining restaurant. Um, but I learned that I get joy out of just being creative because as chefs, we're artists. You know, we're artists in our own way. We make art on a plate. Um, to me, my life will be perfect if I could just open up a little 20 person restaurant, menu changes every day, 
on the beach, whatever we catch of the day. So if that day we catch, if that day we catch a, a, a oysters, if that day we catch lobsters, and and everything local, you know, if it's the guy next door who's growing cilantro out of his yard, okay, which well, literally 15 feet away, you know, um, or well, the guy next to me uh, has a farm, hey, I wanna. Uh, Save me that cow. I'm gonna use that one in in three months when it's ready or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. And paying respect to the food. So I think that's that'll be my perfect world. And and it's not about the money because in this, I'm luckily in a good place right now. But this job it takes a lot of years for you to start making money doing everything else. And and restaurant business is really really hard, especially after COVID. Some of the best restaurants, restaurants that been open 80 years, 60 years closed down because they couldn't keep up. So it's, it's definitely a really, really, really hard business. And I've learned, I got free game working at a casino, you know, um, running a restaurant that makes close to a million dollars a month, you know, working with numbers this big. So me, I, I've, I've used this as a personal knowledge. Like if I'm going to school, you know, seeing these restaurants and these numbers and I'm like, wow, you know, but it's, it's definitely a, a lot, a lot of work. And, and I, I definitely will do it, but it has to be right. Definitely has to be right. You won't bring it back to the East coast. So you're going to stay in the West coast. <laughs> um, look, honestly speaking, I tell everybody, you want to come see me, come out to the West coast. My mm. doors are always open. Um, I definitely need to go back there. I haven't been back for like three years. Uh, but I definitely want to do something different. Well, everybody goes to New York. Everybody goes to uh, L.A. But why not try to make it somewhere where nobody's done it before? You know, a pioneer. Nice. So I, I definitely, I could go there and I know I have enough confidence in myself. I know I could go toe-to-toe with some of the best chefs out there. But, you know, do something different. And it's not about that. To me, it's like about showing love and, and bringing, you know, great food to some people who have never been able to experience it. Alex, when we hit the West Coast, we gotta go visit. You know, he gotta, we gotta go to his restaurant, chef it up. You know, yeah. show the casino for a little bit. Octopus sounds delicious, man. I'm sorry, bro. If it's that good, no, bring it octopus, to the mind. Octopus in that, like, and I, I'm, I work with a lot of crazy ingredients, right? Like, I'm making this week on my menu. I have a, a, a pig ears. You know, so I'm doing crispy pig ears, and I'm doing different style. I got a. I'm doing a whole cabeza next week. I'm doing lengua and I'm smoking. I'm smoking the whole cow head. I'm smoking the whole thing and I'm going to take the cheeks and make barbecue out of it. And Damn. trust me, this thing stuff uh, uh, may look weird, but when you taste it, you will not know it's what you're eating. Because when you look at it in the plate, you're going to be like, wow, I would never thought this would have been lengua. Or this would have been cabeza. Or this would have been, you know, pig ears or whatever. Yeah, I saw the picture of you holding that head. I was like, this boy crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, the whole cow in his hand. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> but you know what? That's that's how if you if you go back to how our parents grew up back in Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico and all that, nothing went to waste. You know, nah, nothing, that's right. how we get that whole that's animal. How we get, that's how we get those asopaos and all those soups and those morcilla and all that blood sausage because there was hey, nothing is going to waste. So I, I, it's going paying respect back to that, but with a twist, you know, I'm going to take something that is not, a lot of people are going to look at it like, oh, this doesn't seem appetizing and make it into something that you're going to be like, give me five more of those, you know, plus two more to go, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so Steven, what are your goals? What, um, you know, what are your short term, long term goals? Uh, like I said, at the moment, um, I, Bought my business license. I'm I'm working on my business. I have a, uh, I'm a like I try mental escape is the gym. So okay. I'm working on a gym clothing line right now. I invested in uh, embroidery machines. Like I said, t-shirt printing machines at the moment. Um, I'm I'm working on working on my chef side of things. I, I want to do uh, especially out here in California. Um, you know, weed is legal everywhere. I personally don't partake, but. Um, you know, I want to do. A, I've I've done a lot of edibles and a lot of um, stuff for people with cancer, people who are sick, people who are going through chemo. Um, 
So I, I'm always finding a way to help people, right? So I'm actually in the works of working with a, a honey farmer, um, and I'm going to try to do my own uh, infused honey. So I've been doing infused honeys and all that. So when people, you know, make their tea at the end of the at night, they take a little bit of THC honey, they take it back, helps them relax, and mm -hmm. more of the overall health, mental, physical, and everything else, and us, you know, eating and, and, and living healthier. Definitely. I, f I feel like uh, your experience, uh, you know, just that whole experience where you started working out again and just get feeling better yourself. You're just like, I got to put people onto this. So I think it's great, you know. But And not to cut you off, you know, what's the biggest issue with our with our our family members? You know, mm -hmm. well, I got that diabetes. Mm -hmm. This person got high cholesterol. This person had a heart attack. This person had a stroke, you know, because, you know, we like to eat good. You know, I, don't get me wrong. I still love all the food growing up and I still tear up a, a plate of chuleta and arroz and everything else but you know we also need to be making some certain life changes that's better for our family we, we, we don't want to be dying you know how many how many phone calls I get from from people back home dying Doña so and so died Don't this person died this person now and I'm like how old 56 60 what 45 of a heart attack or a stroke or you know 45 years old walking with a cane they can't walk you know all these little different things uh you know, I don't want to be 45. I want to be 45 years old and, and feeling like I'm 25. Absolutely. You know, so we definitely got to make those changes. Definitely. Um, I actually brought this up to Alex the other day. I, I think it will be cool to do like a little like a round table where it will kind of be like this virtual. But I want to bring back like a big chunk of people we had on the podcast and just have like conversations on, on things that like matter, you know. And, and just everybody give their take and stuff like that. So I, I think it'll be cool, you know, if, if you join us for that. Um, I'm still working on that. I'm, I'm going to run it by Alex, how we're going to make that happen. But I think it'll, I think you, you're very positive and you have you have your head on right. So I feel like you could definitely bring some information to that and, you know, to the people that watch. I, anytime I, anytime we do a podcast, it's about, it's about like just teaching somebody something, right? Or having them look at it from a different perspective, and and you know you did a great job of that today in this podcast, where you know you're just telling people how you live, but you've done so many changes, and you're willing to try so many new things, and you you're still sitting here talking about like yo, I just got this camera, I'm about to do something with it, I don't know what it's gonna be, but I'm gonna do something with it. So it's like just that motivation is what's stopping so many people from like taking the next step because. People are scared to take that first step. People, people are, are don't believe in themselves, and it's like when I started this YouTube channel, like you don't, you don't, you don't know what to expect from it, right? This this channel started as a gaming channel, and it's like one day me and Alex are having a conversation. It's like, yo, I want to like, I want to like re renovate the channel, and it's like, yo, let's turn it into a podcast, and you know, it's been doing greater than ever. So it's like those little things you gotta. It's such so different. It's so broad, right? But it's you have to take those steps for the best. You know what? We need a we need a podcast from the our people. You know, we we have they have some amazing podcasts out there, right? Uh, majority of them are mm -hmm. hip hop based or you know um, social media based in the sense of uh, media celebrities and all this other stuff. And mm -hmm. I think you guys are doing a great thing. Definitely um, uh, keep doing what you're doing and killing it. And I think we need to take care of our own people and make sure that, you know, we spread the word like, Hey, you know, we, a lot of us didn't have those OGs trying to talk down on, you know, tell us and put us on game and try us to do better and smacking us in the back of the head. Like, Hey, you need to be doing this. And I think, uh, we're still at an age where the youngest could listen to us, you know, and they, we could definitely make a, a positive impact and not just the youngest, just people our own age. Cause you know, there's still a lot of our, our peers left and right who haven't made a change. And, you know, sometimes it takes, you know, a little nudge and for for us to wake up. Definitely. No, definitely. I agree, bro. And I'm I'm hundred percent with you with you know, especially with our people with mental health, man. That that to me is like I said, I preach it all the time, bro. It, it's sad because we lost, you know, I've known people that I've known for years and I lost them because, you know, we couldn't take life, you know, for whatever it is because they had nobody to speak to. You know, and they take their own life or something like that because they had nobody to speak to. You know, and I and I definitely agree with you, man. Our mental health as Hispanic males is definitely a, a a big thing and a big thing that we should always be talking about and should always try to 
put our best foot forward and help those that we feel like are in need of that. You know, even if it's just a small conversation, just be able to reach out and be able to just, you know, be able to talk somebody out of doing something stupid or just being able to maybe brighten up their day just a little bit. Like I said, this is my hope with this podcast is to be able to give somebody a little bit of hope, man, and say, you know what, damn, I'm not done with this, yo. I'm, I'm out here. You know what? If they could do it, I could do it. You know, if this dude is doing it, then I could do it too. You know, and, and that's the push that I want with this whole platform. No, and you guys are definitely going to do it. And like I said, uh, um, you know, I'm a busy guy, but to whoever's listening, to whoever who's going to watch this, I've talked to people from around the world, people that I've never met before, and it only takes a DM, a simple, you know, and sometimes you need to, it's, it, you feel more uncomfortable talking to a stranger than talking to your own friends and family. So if anybody needs to talk, uh, or anything, I'm always willing to open. If it's a, you know, you don't know how many conversations I have on my way to work, on my way to the supermarket, and there may be five, 10 minute conversations, but sometimes people just need to let things out and, or even, uh, you know, talk a little shit, you know, hey, what you, and you know, you start yeah. laughing and you hear them la crack a smile on the other side of the phone and that's all it takes and their day turns around, they laughing and they're having a good time. So, uh, you know, it's never too late. DM, a hello, hey, what's popping? Hey, what you doing today? Blah, blah, just catching up. It, it goes a long way. For sure. And, um, you know, uh, let's throw out your social media out there. So if people do want to reach out and, you know, if people want to follow you and just see see you holding these peg heads up, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I, I got a couple pages. Like I said, I got uh, Chef Poppy NYCA. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Chef NYCA mm -hmm. is my main page. Uh I started to separate all of them. That's where you're going to find me and see all the food stuff that I do, all the crazy stuff. Uh, you'll see me filming. I do a lot of filming there. I do stuff for the casino, stuff for other companies. Like I said, Kardashians, all this stuff. I, all my food stuff is going to be on Chef NYCA. Obviously, Chef, New York, California, right? Chef hey. NYCA. Nice. Um, then I got Fit Poppy NYCA. That's my fitness page. That one I do a... a uh, all my fitness stuff and you'll see me there goldito and then now you see me you know so you could definitely do it and there's days i don't want to be there but now i have this thing going on there on the fitness page where i have people from all over again i'm not no trainer tagging me and checking in hey i'm in texas checking in for my workout and sometimes nice. i tag body and it keeps everybody accountable so people who are starting their fitness journey want to be part of the family and just tag you know just a simple tag hey I checked in today. Where you at? I don't. I don't see your. I don't see your story. <laughs> at least in a little snippet. Let me see you working out. And, you know, and it keeps people accountable. Um, and then Chef Poppy LLC. It's my business. You know, that's where I do all my the infused stuff, all the uh, t-shirts, all the hoodies stuff. And then lastly, art by by Poppy is my uh, my new photography where I'm gonna be showing the world what I see through my eyes. So yeah. Plug, plug plug up your merch a little bit. I, I know you say you was doing shirts and stuff. Talk about it, man. Go ahead. Do your thing. Well, like to me, like I said, it's uh to me it's just let me see if I, I think I got one on right now. Hold on. Mm -hmm. So I got brat. Everybody knows I used to be like brat brat everywhere I go. You know, <laughs> New York City and obviously I got I got New York City to California because I'm a New York City. But I do a lot of custom work. So a lot of my clients, um, you know, they don't know where to start off with and they need something done. I get it done. I got patches. I got hoodies. I got beanies. I got gym clothes. I I got people. Uh, I've done people's golf bags. I've gone. I've done jean jackets, leather. So I've been doing a lot of private, private clients because obviously they're starting their clothing line, and nice. they're not promoting this. So I've had to sign an NDA. Can't speak about it because it's they're waiting for it to drop. But yeah, you know, if anybody needs help, I'm always willing to help with anything. Any questions? Any Anything customized, anything personalized, hit your boy up. All right, you heard it. So go check out the Instagram page, and then I, I'm sure it has the link to the website, right? Yeah, I have I, every single page has all the pages tagged on my on my bio. Right. So if you just want to take a stroll, just click on one, and you'll find all the other three. And obviously, I have my my shop there. You could go hit me up, send me a DM, order something. Just let me know. But, but, and you know, uh, Flip Talk Podcast as well, we have, we have some good news. If you guys have been tuning into social media, you guys know about it, but we have a first sponsor, which is Mobile Photo on Instagram. And, um, I purposely, purposely didn't, uh, 
talk about them in the beginning oh, yeah. for sure right right so uh you know they're, they're a tech company they 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 pretty much make podcast equipment for the go they make you know any any little thing to hold your phone they, they make mics uh uh, and everything you need, just if you're a content creator or if you do podcasting, you definitely want to go check them out. But um, I'm going to make sure in the next podcast, I uh, have more information on it. It's just we're taking care of a couple of things before we start uh, promoting a little more. But, you know, they're, they're a great company. They're showing a lot of support already. They sent a bunch of stuff. If you guys saw it on my Instagram. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to see what what what's going to come out of this because they, they make really good products. And it's like... They, they sent us like podcasting equipment where we could have on the go. So like, let's say me and Alex f- drive somewhere and stuff like that. It's just like, you want to do a quick podcast is all we got to do is like plug it in. Bam, bam. We got the mic headphones ready to go. Live to the kitchen. Don't worry about it. Come with Cali. Hey. With the apron on, butt naked. Doing there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that that that'll be that that'll be fire. Do a little podcast, like you know, in the kitchen type, you know, or right a restaurant movement going That's around, so just sitting there talking. That'll be cool, for sure. But but yeah, like that 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 that's so helpful to us. Uh, you know, thank you to Mobile Photos for that because it's like now we're be we're able to be mobile and and it's it's nice to know that you can kind of step away and from you know these little boxes we see here where. We're just talking to each other. We're having a great time, but we can actually be next to each other and like dap each other up and just you know just vibe out. So um, that's definitely gonna be the equipment we'll be using every time we're on the go. But uh, you know, oh, yeah, appreciate it, appreciate it. But yeah, man, um, uh, let's wrap it up. So you know, you have your social medias. We're gonna put that down in the description below. Um, is there any last words you want? Any last words of encouragement you want to leave for everybody watching? Oh, just uh, obviously, I want to say by telling you guys thank you for having me on the podcast. You know, uh, you guys obviously are doing a great thing. Um, I got you guys. Whatever you guys need, you know, I appreciate you guys. You know, I guys back. You guys definitely got a fan. And then uh, for, to anybody out there, again, if anybody needs help with anything, my phone is always open. I'm here to help anybody out. Any struggles, any advice on anything, hit me up. I'm, I'm on open book and I'm here to help. So if you're having a tough day or you want to get into the business or, you know, you want you want have some information about Cali, whatever it is, just hit me up. For sure, for sure. Any last words, Alex? Nah, man, it's, it's truly a, a pleasure, bro, and, uh, and a big-ass honor for me because seeing you from what you was as a kid to now, you know, being a man, doing what you do, doing what you love is, is a touching spot in my heart because, I, like I said, it's – is a beautiful thing to see it and i want you to be an inspiration for anybody that sees this because when you don't give up you see where you can go yeah things are going to get hard but listen if you can push through it you're going to get to you, the gains are so much better than what you assume you know what i'm saying that the, the the negative is you you can fall down to the bottom of the hole but there's a way to get out you know what i'm saying and i'm very proud of you steve man i'm proud of everything that you're doing bro Please continue going. Please, I'm be right, right behind you, bro. Supporting you 1,000 percent, whatever what you do. And I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna always be cheering Steve, no matter what, bro. I love you, bro. Thank you for being on here. And like I said, send love to your daughter, send love to your wife, send love to your mom, to your your grandparents, everything, bro. Send them all love. Appreciate that. Thank you. And I, I want to point out it's a special episode because you're Alex's first guest. You know he, you know he he um. <laughs> You know, he, he makes he made sure to go out with a bang. He's like, you know what? I'm going to bring somebody on. I'm going to bring somebody worth talking to. So, you know, I appreciate both of you guys for making this happen and, you know, taking the time out of your schedule as parents and just, you know, everything you guys are doing. So um, we're going to wrap up fla- uh, the Flip Talk podcast episode nine. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And we'll definitely have you back on. And we're excited to hear what you're going to do in the future. Appreciate it, brother. All right. We'll catch you later. Later.